summer season is here, and with it comes a bunch of new shows for everyone to enjoy. Thankfully, unlike spring, the number is a lot lower for me. But instead of waiting the full three months, I wanted to give you guys my top five shows I recommend watching. Let's do it. Welcome back to the channel, Geo here. First show on the list here that I recommend is Uncle from Another World. This is based off the manga of the same name, and in it we follow the character, or actually two characters, Takafumi Takaoka and his uncle, Yosuke Shibazaki. 17 years ago, Yosuke fell into a coma, and all of a sudden he's back. Takafumi is perplexed. His family doesn't really know what to do with the whole situation, but Takafumi's interested because, one, Yosuke is quite the character. He is obsessed with Sega and video games, retro video games. And two, Takafumi discovers from his uncle's ramblings, he apparently was isekai during those 17 years, transported into another world as a heroic guardian. Now an unlikely bond and friendship forms as the uncle is trying to catch up with decades worth of pop culture, entertainment, technology. All that stuff while Takafumi is learning about his experiences while Takafumi is learning about his uncle's experiences in this other world. The animation on this is really sharp and clean. I really enjoy the character designs and I say this with peace and love. It's a lot better to me at least than the original source material. I know some people were upset with the manga or at least at the starting point it's so sketchy and rough looking but this animation I do like it. It's nice and clean I believe. It's it is done by Atelier Pont Dark. I probably butchered that, but they are a brand new studio. You might have known them from last year when they did uh, Ganbare Doki-chan. And now they're doing this, Uncle from Another World. So this is airing on Netflix. I really enjoy the character of Yosuke. Of course, he is voiced by the man, Takehito Koyasu, one of my favorite voice actors. He's awesome in every role. And in this, he just kills it. I love that... It's funny, it's unexpected. You think, oh, you're going into an isekai and you're seeing the uncle character, you're seeing Yosuke, and you think, oh, this guy is kind of a creep, but not really. He's really a wholesome guy and kind of misunderstood. And Takafumi is trying to learn and he sees what his uncle is capable of with magic spells and all that. So it is real. He did travel to another world and he has all these characters that are going to show up in present time, so I'm very much looking forward to that. This is a type of show that knows what it's doing, it's funny, it knows how to have fun, and it doesn't take itself too serious and can actually subvert your expectations when it comes to isekai and modern anime and manga. Also, the fact that they reference so much of the 90s console wars that Yosuke is such a huge fan of the Sega brand and the Sega Saturn and Genesis and he's a huge fan of Sonic and Tails and playing Sonic 2. I love all of that stuff. I'm a huge fan of retro gaming. This is right up my wheelhouse. I love this show and I highly recommend you guys check it out as well. Next up is the anime adaptation of Call of the Night, based on the manga of the same name. This one took me by surprise. I was already interested in checking out the manga, hadn't had the opportunity to, but now I'm watching the show and I absolutely love it. Basically, you're following the character of Ko Yamori. He is this kid who has a mad case of wanderlust and insomnia, and one fateful night, he is traversing aimlessly with nothing much going on in his head. He has no idea what he wants to do with his life until he meets Nazuna, who might be a vampire. Now with vampire stories, I'm typically not a huge fan of anime and manga vampirism. I've never dug half the stories that are out there, but this one I dig. And I think it's because of the visuals and character designs. Also, the characters are great too, but there's something very alluring about this show and the way the background artist worked on this title. This adaptation is done by Linden Films, which surprised me because I'm very uh, lukewarm on that studio, but lately their adaptations have been really solid. Such is the case here with Call of the Night. You have uh, Nazuna, who is this uh, vampire and with 
you know, with vampiric stories, there is a sensual nature to it all. And that is evident here. It might creep you out because of the age difference, but I do recommend checking it out. The visuals on this are beautiful. I love everything about it. And the characters are actually really funny. They're smarter than you think they are. Ko understands what is happening with Nazuna. She's kind of a trickster but she's honest to a fault in some areas, and that makes for an interesting dynamic. And the fact that Ko now has this extraordinary adventure with this otherworldly character, if you will, certainly breaking the monotony of everyday life. He's not going to school and he's sort of being a recluse and wants to go out at night and explore and all that. And what better way to bring yourself into adulthood, I guess, and to experience new things than by this coming of age story told through vampirism. Of course, there are more elements to it and more characters that are introduced, but you guys got to check it out. I do recommend it. Call of the Night is streaming on High Dive and it's pretty freaking awesome. Lacoris Recoil, you follow a character called Takina Inoue, a high school girl working as a direct attack member of an all-female task force of assassins and spies known as Lacoris. At the start of the show, she is dispatched to eliminate some evil bad guys threatening the city, and she is sanctioned for disobeying orders and is sent to work under an elite Lacoris agent called Chisato at one of the branches from the main agency or whatever. They operate under the cover of a cafe called Lico Rico. I probably said that wrong. <laughs> But I'll be honest with you, this is the type of story that gets a little bit too convoluted for its own good. I've seen this in the past with spy shows with cute girls, but the animation on this by A1 Pictures really makes up for it. To see the girls in motion doing their thing, kicking ass and shooting up bad guys and all that, I do recommend it just at an artistic level. It's really awesome. A1 really stepped up and brought some really nice visuals and character designs and just the interactions between Takina and Chisato, pure gold. The voice actresses for both are fantastic and really bring these stories and these characters to life in a fun engaging way yes they get involved into some shenanigans with spy missions and finding out why Takina did the things that she did Chisato is the super elite member she's super strong but such a happy go lucky tour de force of a character I would just say watch it for that performance alone I think it's worth it and you can stream this one on Crunchyroll. Yure Deco. I always look for shows that break the norm and try to do different things. And this one, to me, is very special and could actually end up being one of the best shows if it keeps up the momentum, because I really enjoyed the first two episodes of this series. Yure Deco is an original anime done by Science Saru. I'm a big fan of Saru because they just do whatever the heck they want in terms of art style and storytelling, and they're very indie compared to the other studios in my opinion. So what the heck is Yure Deco about? Well, the story is about Barry, an average girl that lives in this futuristic island called Tom Sawyer. Everybody has a social credit system called the Decoration Customizer, or Deco for short. Citizens work to collect love or, you know, like points, reward points, which act as currency for services to improve their avatars and things that they can do on on the cyberspace. So it's a very creepy look into the possible future, technological future for us. Now everybody's obsessed with their deco and acquiring love and working on their digital self. And when you look at the real town, it's very mundane and boring looking, but it's all decorated with a lot of VR neon lit signs and floating pictures and thingamajigs. It's very interesting. I could see that happening at some point down the line many years to come. Barry is a young girl obsessed with finding Zero, a mythical criminal that is said to reduce the love points to anybody that he encounters down to Zero. She has a faulty deco in her left eye, and on her way, she sees a person who is invisible to the decos of everyone else, and he is playing pranks and scamming people out of their 
love points. She thinks this kid is Zero, but it turns out he's something else until the actual Zero shows up and stuff just hits the fan. Yurei Denko has a very distinct art style, like many of Sai and Saru's projects. I love it. It's very quirky looking, but it has a ton of personality and a fantastic voice cast at that. I highly recommend it. I think this is a worthy show for anybody to check out. If you want something different, out of the norm, check out Yurei Denko. This one's also streaming on Crunchyroll. For the last one, I went with something wholesome. I know there are a lot of shows that are returning, stuff like The Devil is a Bard Timer with season two and Overlord with its fourth season, but I wanted to give you guys something brand spanking new. So I picked The Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting. I didn't know I was gonna love it, but man, I'm on board because this is one of the most wholesome experiences of the year for me when it comes to anime. I am really digging this show. I know it's based on a manga. I haven't checked out the original source material, but this is the type of show that you can relax and enjoy something cute, refreshing, and nice with great art done by Feel and Gaina. I hope I'm pronouncing those two studios right. So essentially you're following the character of Toru Kirishima, the right-hand man of the Sakuragi crime family. He's known in the streets as the demon of Sakuragi for his violent nature and uh, just a very uh, sadistic Yakuza, if you will, until one day he receives an assignment from his boss to babysit his daughter. This is absolutely heartwarming to see Kirishima understand that it doesn't have to be so violent all the time. I mean, I'm not making excuses for crime and uh, crime families or Yakuza, but he gets an opportunity to kind of settle down a little bit by babysitting Yaeka Sakuragi, the daughter of the crime lord. She is an adorable little girl. So it's a really fun dynamic between the two characters and to see Kirishima explore different sides to himself. He's not the demon of Sakuragi. There's more to him. And, you know, having this assignment with Yaeka is going to bring that out for everybody to see. Animation's nice, right to the point. The voice cast is great. And it's just a really fun feel good story. There are a couple moments in there that will tug at your heartstrings and overall just the dynamic between the main cast is really adorable. I do recommend it. Something nice for everybody to check out and it's also streaming on Crunchyroll. So there you go. Five shows I recommend this summer for you to check out. So if you're new to the channel, at the end of the anime season, I'm going to take a look at everything that I've been watching, not just these five, and review them for you guys and tell you what I liked, what I didn't like, and what I recommend watching. So I'm very interested in what you guys are checking out for the summer season 2022. Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you everybody for liking, commenting, subscribing. I really do appreciate it. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I do content like this, talking about anime seasons. I also review manga, hauls, all that fun stuff. I'd appreciate it if you check the channel out. Thank you everybody for tuning in. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.